Hey, this is your boy Corn Dog, the real hustler, and I'm here in Rochester, Michigan, at the least beautiful cosmetic salon with the owner, the founder, the creator, Dr. Elise Calvert. Wow, what an introduction. It is so excited to have the real hustler here with us. We are excited to have you in Rochester and to be a part of our national launch party. Well, this is truly awesome. I mean, this is truly laid out. Let the people know, when did you found the, 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 the cosmetics line? Uh, what's the purpose? And like I asked you earlier, off camera, what about the men? And the men have been taken care of. So you know what? I'm gonna since you the man, I'm gonna address the men first. When we created this product line, because I have a husband, I also wanted to have a line that would reach out to men as well. And men want to take care of their skin. Men want good looking skin. They want to be able to shave without having shaving bumps. They want to use face scrubs, and we have all of those. So we have your face cleansers. We have your moisturizers. We have your your shell gels, everything that you need in order for you to feel and look as handsome as you do. We carry it here at EB Cosmetics. But the company was started in 2008 and it started out of an idea. I came from Mary Kay and I was an executive director and um, I did three, four and a half million dollars for eight years consecutively with the company and I decided that we needed a brand that just represented us and I wanted to go back and when I say us, I mean women. And I wanted to go back and actually create something so that we could have it that would cross gender lines. So the cosmetic line actually started out of coaching, if you can believe that. I'm actually a certified coach. And as I coach women to happiness and they got their joy back, they said, will you help me with my makeup? And I said, you know what? I can do a line. And so that is where it came from. That is how I got started. I've been at both Oakland Mall and I've been at 12 Oaks Mall. And in our first 10 months, we did $100,000. And I said, I think we got something. Um, so we left the malls and I went to Birmingham and shared some space. And then one year ago, I came here to Rochester. And it's been the best thing that I've ever done. Just the support, not only from my community, but from other communities. Because I want to make sure that this project reach everybody so I'm excited about what it's doing and where we're going and we just signed of course as you know Lynette McKee to our brand who is here this evening and that's a um, good look she's gonna be the face to the brand and we're excited so it'll be out in all the magazines and everybody can start we're gonna start off like a little fashion fair and then become a big fashion fair now, this is your national launch. Right? This is my national launch. So where right else here. Will, will your product be? My product is going to be it's going to be all over the country. There's a major deal. It's already been signed, and we're just waiting on the final thing. But I will say, if you know anything about Max Sinista, maybe very little. Okay, well, you I've heard them, but I don't. You know, I don't. you will find it in those stores, and the ladies out there know exactly what that is. So look for us in spring and summer, and we will be in um, all of the major lines in the stores where you'll just be able to drive to the store, and as you picking up your clothes, you're gonna pick up your makeup. Now, I, I, silly question, okay. but I know that you you use your own product, right? Absolutely. Well, because this, this you, you're a beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, when we started the company, I originally we have a board of directors, we have shares, so that people that want to invest can invest um, in our company as well. But I got five dollars. Can I? Can I get in? You can get one share. Oh, okay, cool. Shares are five. You can get one share for five dollars. So we have investors, we have board members. Um, it is a full corporation. It's operational and it is moving. In 2012 and 13, we are doing wonderful. And I, I'm sure that it's going to take off. I'm going to make sure that I try some of your product for men. Please, please try the product. You know what? In your bag, in your swag bag, is some product for men for you to try. So you be sure to try that. Because I want all the men on EB as well. And you heard it first from, from the good doctor. At least beautiful. Thank you so much. Hey, this is your boy Coin Dog, the Real Hustler, and I'm here at the at least beautiful cosmetics launch party, and I'm sitting here with a true queen of the silver screen, the lovely and beautiful Lynette McKee. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. Oh, but it, but it's all true. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we were here and we were privileged to hear you sing, which I'm like, 
I'm, I'm taken away. Really? I mean, in the movies, you know, you think most of that stuff is kind of like voiced over. But here I actually heard you sing, oh, and I'm yeah, like, I'm wow. I'm a real singer. Well, you know, I started uh, my career in Detroit as a child music prodigy. So I was in music here when I was like seven, eight years old. And born and raised here. Yeah, people didn't, a lot of people don't know that. Detroit is your home. Yes. What, what area did you grow up in? Uh, Collingwood between 12th and 14th. I stayed on Broad Street between Collinwood and Burlingame. No way! So tell me, Lynette, how did you become involved with Elise Beautiful Cosmetics? It was so ironic. I was um, having a, an, an estate sale about a year and a half ago because I had been living in Detroit for a couple of years. And I decided, well, some, some uh, business opportunities arose, but they were in New York. And I was kind of at a, in a point in my life where I wasn't really doing anything here. I was trying some stuff, but I, I just, I, you know, stuff spiritually wasn't clicking. So um, I decided to sell a lot of my things and have this little estate sale and list things on Craigslist. And Andrea was one of the people that showed up at my estate sale and ended up buying some of my items, furniture and rugs and stuff. And we started talking and we liked each other right away. And she said, you know, I'm developing a, a cosmetic line and you're you. And she said, maybe we can, you know, work together and maybe, maybe you could be spokesperson for my cosmetic line. I was like, that'd be great. That'd be really cool because we liked each other anyway right away. And sure enough, that was a year and a half ago. The new Sparkle just was released in August. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, being that you were one of the actors from the original Sparkle, 1976 version? You play sister. So what is your take on the new um, movie? I, honestly, I feel it's an honor to have been in something, anything, that filmmakers nowadays, as hard as it is to get projects funded, especially black projects, I feel honored that the filmmakers felt that something that I was in was significant enough to go for doing a remake on it. It's an honor. That's a classic. But so it's an honor for me that these new filmmakers are smart enough to want to remake it again. Well, can I be honest? When, when I saw Sparkle the first time, and, and you all were singing, giving him something he could feel. I thought you were singing to me. <laughs> I mean, I was about 13, 14, but I didn't know what I was going to feel. But I said, hey, I want whatever they going to let me feel. That was just, you, you know, you. like I said, that's a classic movie. And, and It turned out really well, that original Sparkle. It really did. I got to say. And that actually was your first movie, wasn't it? That was my first major. That was my first movie. I, like I said, I was in the music industry, and I had left uh, Detroit very early. I actually dropped out of school when I was 14 and basically kind of ran away from home with the blessing of my mother. And um, it was in, Det uh, in uh, L.A. and trying to get stuff going in the music industry, and I did. I, I got an album and stuff with uh, Clarence Avant, Sussex label and um, got sent out on this open call to do Sparkle. And I didn't know if uh, acting was going to be my uh, path. But I, when I read the script, I, the, the script spoke to me. And the character, sister, spoke to me. And I just knew. You know how you know what you know? Nobody needs to tell you. It doesn't matter that I hadn't studied acting. It didn't matter that that wasn't what I was intending to do. I, I was intending to be a writer, you know, play the keyboards and write my music and be a singer, much like what Alicia Keys does today. I was doing, you know, 30 years ago. Um, and I thought that would be my, my break in the industry. But as it turns out, if you remain open to everything and attached to nothing, what God means, means to happen for you is what's going to happen. And so that's what happened. I went on this big audition and got the role. But I, I, I kind of always ask this question. You've got so many movies. What was your favorite, favorite movie making? Well, you know, Sparkle has a place in my heart because that was my first film. But it's hard to, it's hard to say. All the films that I've done with all the different uh, actors and stars that I've worked with, they all have different significances to me, different 
uh, things about them that make them special. So I really, I don't have a favorite, but if I had to pick a favorite, of course, it would be Sparkle. I also really happen to like Round Midnight. I, you got some singing in that one. I got to sing, but I got to sing in Cotton Club, too. But there was something about Round Midnight, the fact that I was working with Dexter Gordon, Herbie Hancock, Tony Williams, Bobby Hutcherson, Wayne Shorter in Paris with one of the greatest French directors in the world. There was something very magical about that project. And being able to sing those songs live with Herbie and Dexter. We didn't record them and then lip sync them. We were re singing live as you saw us filming. And there's, there's, a, you know, there's a magic in that. And in working with those kinds of music legends, there's a magic with, because honestly, my first love is music. It has always been and will always be. That's what I like to do is write music. That's it. And if I can't write it, then I want to sing the great songs, the standards. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time out to talk with me. Oh, tell everybody they have to come to my concert on November 2nd in New York. Michael Henderson and I, who grew up here in Detroit together, the great bass player and musician, Valentine Love, and he played with Miles Davis for the like past 25 years. We're doing our first ever, and we're old friends since we were kids. Uh, we're doing our first ever concert together in New York on November 2nd at Aaron Davis Hall. So anybody that can get to the concert, come on, come backstage. You can be a VIP guest because come see us do this concert on November 2nd, me and Michael Henderson. I'm buying my ticket. I'm on the first thing smoking. <laughs> you better come. Hey, this is your man, Corn Dog, the Real Hustler, sitting with the beautiful and lovely Lynette McKee. It's been a blast. A blast, baby. A stone gas, as Don Cornelius would say.